In this video, we'll be taking a look at what joining data actually means and the way different join types work when it comes to the relational data model. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to Vitamin BI, bringing you business intelligence for beginners and beyond. My name's Adam and on this channel, I help you do more with data. So if you're new here, please do subscribe. Okay, so let's start off by talking about the relational data model, because it'll give you much more context when we move on to talking about how joining data works in a minute. I've briefly touched on the relational model in other videos and I'll leave a link to them in the description. But basically, a relational database contains lots of data sets in what are called tables because they're in a tabular rows and columns format like you find in a spreadsheet. The reason it's called relational is that each table usually, although not always, has a relationship to one or more other tables in the database. This relationship takes the form of one or more common data fields or columns that contain the same information. They're called joining keys because they are the key to telling the database how the rows in one table are connected to another, what the relationship is. So when you write a SQL database query, you specify, among other things, the fields you want to return from both tables, the joining keys, and the type of join to apply. There are four different join types, and we'll look at each one in turn. You have left outer join, right outer join, inner join, and full outer join. To understand the whole idea of left and right, just picture the two tables you want to join like this. On the left side, we have a table called orders, containing data for all of our orders. To the right of that table, we have another called managers, containing data relating to the managers of the different sales regions. The type of join I use will depend on the data that I want to return with my query. Let's start with the left outer join. In this example, the common field, the joining key between the two tables is region. You may notice that both tables contain a row ID field, but those identifiers are specific to their own table. So although they may contain common values, it's not the same information. Anyway, let's say that I want to add the manager name to each of the orders in the orders table. Here, I've got the data in spreadsheets just for demonstration purposes. What this means is that I want my query to return all of the data from the left table, the orders, and then data from the right table, managers, where the joining key region contains matching values. So row by row, the query will check the value in the region field to see if that value appears in both tables. If it does, it will take the data we're asking for from the managers table and append it to the row. In our first row, the region is south, so we go over to the managers table and look for the rows containing south. Row ID 4, and we take the manager name from that row and append it to the order row. In the next row, the region is west, so again we go to the managers data and look for the row containing west. Take the manager name and append it to the row in the orders table, etc, etc. And that is the left outer join, because we're using the table on the left as the principal data source. And this is what the SQL query and result would look like. The manager name has been appended to each row. So what would happen if we changed from a left outer to a right outer join? When I do that and run the query, we can see this first row containing the manager name Henry Bennett. And this is because it's data from the right side of the join that doesn't have a value match on the left. If I change the region column to the one from the managers table and run the query again, we can see that Henry Bennett represents the north region that we don't have any data for in the orders table. So there you can see how the left and right outer joins work. But what about the inner join? Well, the logic behind this is that the result of the query can only contain data from either table where the value in the joining key matches. So in our example, where the north region only appears in the managers table, it couldn't be included in the result. 
So, in fact, the result of an inner join in our example would essentially be identical to the left outer join result. And what about a full outer join? This is where all data from both sides can be included in the result. In our example, the result would actually be the same as the right outer join, because the north region manager that only appears in the manager table will be included in the result. So you see, there can sometimes be an overlap between the different join types in certain situations. I'm going to go one step further and join the returns data to our result. So, as well as the manager name, we want to include the return status for the relevant orders. All I need to do is add in the fields I want and specify the join. And the return status will be appended to the relevant rows. So, here and here. So far, so good. Nothing too complicated. But sometimes when you join data, you might find that the result of the join is giving you unexpected results, in that the figures are way off or there are more rows in the result than anticipated. Let's see how and why this might happen. Here's a different manager's table containing more information. I now have the regional managers for each of the different segments. If I were to run the same query as before with the old manager's table, you'll see that I now have three rows for every row ID. This is because we've only specified region as a joining key. So, because there are three rows for each region in the manager's table, a new row is created for each in the result. In order to fix this, we would also need to add segment as a second joining key, like so. And now the database knows exactly which row from the manager's table to join with each row in orders. So what we learn from this is that unless the joining keys you specify produce unique, unambiguous connections between rows of two tables, your result will more often than not end up being erroneous. This, for me, is the biggest mistake that people make when joining data using BI tools, when they don't understand how the relational data model works. Just because a tool allows you to join data, there's no special magic that will be applied to produce the results that you're looking for if you don't know how to join data correctly. This is why it's essential to know what your data looks like how it's structured, and its level of granularity before trying to join it. If this has whet your appetite for learning more about SQL, then you'll want to check out my 15-minute crash course here. And if you're interested in a career in business intelligence, check out this playlist here. Please do like the video if you found it useful, subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I upload new videos, usually every week. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Adam Finer, and until the next time, stay BI Curious.